In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we adore you, we adore you. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of your people you have made for your own, Incre increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, 
and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was thrust down, thrust down and falling, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song. He was my savior. There are shouts of joy and salvation in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, a marvel in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus in the Christ the Son of God, and that through this belief, belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday. Divine Mercy Sunday comes from St. Faustina, the visions that she had of Jesus Christ, asking her to declare the Sunday after Easter Divine Mercy, where the miracle of his mercy is poured out abundantly, especially on this day. So brothers and sisters, especially those who have not been to confession in a long time, this is your day. Go this weekend. Track down a priest, find out where they're having confessions, but go. Why is this Sunday so important? Well, as I've been telling penitents lately in the confessional, the Lord loves when you come into the confessional. He loves it because it's where he gets to give you the graces that he won for you, particularly on the cross. Not for you all, but particularly for you. And he paid for those graces with his life, so they're precious. There is no sin that Jesus will not forgive if you are truly sorry and if you were truly going to try to not do them in the future. 
His mercy is so readily available for each of us who believe in his mercy, who believe in the sacrifice on the cross and believe in his resurrection. So if you haven't been to confession, those listening, those watching online, those in the pews, please go. Something amazing is waiting for you. The Lord giving you permission not to be weighed down by your sin. To tell you, you mean more to me than what the worst thing that you've ever done. It really is the opposite of what we're experiencing in our culture, which is cancel culture. If you've ever done anything wrong, you're done. One strike and you're out. It's actually anti-Christian, where Jesus says, if your brother sins against you, don't forgive him seven times, but 77 times seven. As many times as they're sorry, you offer mercy and pardon to them. And in fact, we'll say in our, our Father here in a few moments, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In other words, in the way in which that I forgive others, Lord, that's how you will forgive me. Brothers and sisters, the whole reason why Jesus came and suffered and rose, died and rose, is mercy. And we have to get a couple things straight with mercy. Many people think, well, mercy means there's no sin. That's not what mercy is. Mercy expunges the consequence of sin, but it doesn't expunge the offense or the law or requirement. The law still stays, right? It's what he says to the woman caught in adultery over here. Go and sin no more. He doesn't say what you did was okay, but he says, go and sin no more. I pardon you of the consequence of your choice. In today's gospel, he gives the apostles the power to forgive sins. Only a priest has this authority given to the apostles then handed down to the priests throughout the ages. Father, I go straight to God. Great, you're supposed to go straight to God. But that's also not how Jesus set it up. He wants you to go to the people who have the authority and the power to absolve you. Father, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing for me too, right? That's how we humble ourselves. And I promise you, every priest that you go to has heard it all. You are never going to scandalize us. We get a view of humanity that no one else gets. Okay? Don't be afraid. It can be uncomfortable going in, but you're going to love the feeling coming out knowing that I've done something to prove that I believe in the Lord's act of love and his mercy for me. Not just nebulous in my prayer to God, but an actual concrete, intentional way of receiving the sacrament. We often say to people, actions speak louder than words. You would never marry a person who says I love you to your face, but does everything the other direction and never shows you that they love you. How do we show Jesus that we believe in his sacrifice? How do we show him that we believe we're truly forgiven, that we believe his words as he breathes on his apostles and his priests and says, whatever sins you forgive are forgiven, whatever sins you retain are retained. Actions speak louder than words. Simply saying, I believe, but not acting on it, we're missing an important part and piece. So brothers and sisters, Divine Mercy Sunday is for the sinner. That's me, and that's you. 
Bring that sin that you've never confessed to the sacrament. Bring the sin that's haunted you for years or the sin that you keep falling to and are struggling with. Bring it because Jesus has conquered sin and death and he's conquered your sin. And this is the way in which we can say, I believe in you, Lord. I believe that you conquered my sin on the cross. And I believe you want to give me the graces that will equip me to be victorious in temptation. The fruition of the resurrection is Divine Mercy Sunday. It's where Jesus gets to give you the graces that he won for you on the cross. And he loves to give them to you. As he walks into the apostles room where the doors are closed he says peace be with you and that's what he wants to say to you to lift you out of your sin to give you the confidence to say no to the enemy this is the victory that he's won for us and he can't wait to grant it to each of you and to me Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in the joy of the resurrection, we now turn to our Heavenly Father with our prayers. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the bishops, may God grant them prudence, grace, and protection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for harmony among peoples, that through our Lord's divine mercy, every hatred may be laid rest, wars ended, and the whole earth enjoy prosperity and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater respect for human life, may countries obey the laws of God and vigorously defend the right to life of everyone from conception through natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater tenderness and compassion towards the poor, the abandoned, and the stranger, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to forgive one's enemy and for reconciliation between families and spouses, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all farmers and those who raise livestock, may their efforts to provide food for us and for the whole world be fruitful. May they be rewarded in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those enduring terminal illness, undergoing surgeries, or experiencing intense pain. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. And for all those who have died, especially parishioner Dr. John Greyer. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, Christ your Son revealed your merciful heart upon the cross. Help us to forgive as he did, and hear our prayers for we offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Masses celebrated today at Christ the King are offered for the eternal repose of Andrew Woodard, the repose of the soul of Lori Kaplan Greco, the eternal repose of Ronald Smith, the repose of the souls of Leo Francis Ambrose, and the well-being of the people of Christ the King Parish. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son of the Highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son of the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we each this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim you with the devil until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and George our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those that couldn't join us today for sacramental communion, we join in solidarity with them a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are so grateful that you're here today, especially all those who are visiting Christ the King for the first time and all those who may be returning to church for the first time. Remember how loved you are by this community and by God. As you depart today, please be sure to take a bulletin. There's an important announcement from Archbishop Lucas about the current dispensation from attending uh, Sunday Masses in the bulletin as well as the announcement of our next pastor at Christ the King, Father John Petromali, who will begin on July 1st. There is also time to sign up for our wise and wonderful senior bingo this Tuesday. Please call Lori Dvorak in the rectory no later than Monday tomorrow uh, with your choice of, of ham sandwich, chef salad, or chicken salad croissant. Uh, it's sure to be a great time. If you'd like to join the parish, please join at our April uh, new parishioner orientation tomorrow or Sunday afternoon um, today, sort of, uh, at 10 a.m. after the 10 a.m. mass in the parish center. Donuts will be served. On this octave of Easter, the eighth day of Easter, uh, we wish to continue a blessed and happy Easter. Remember, brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus has conquered the sin in your life. Believe it. Uh, live like he has conquered it. And it gives you confidence in saying no to the evil one in temptation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.